Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly and the Chicago trial that is going on as we speak, and the federal Brooklyn appeal that is also being reviewed. Um, today is August 30th, 2022. Can't believe it. Cannot believe it. So today I want to get on and uh, just talk a little bit to the area of uh, comments that I received on one of the videos that I had done yesterday. And I choose to do this because I like to answer questions and say things to individuals that I would otherwise not be able to since I can't stream live right now. YouTube has me kind of congested here. So there's one, and, and there's many. Michelle, thank you. Claudette, thank you. Yvette, Frankie, and Johnny, and many, many more. But the one I want to focus on today is Yvette Scott. Um, she, she said, not every situation calls for any personal opinions or matter of fact. Life isn't life itself isn't always matters of facts. The only absolute for certain matter of fact is death, which is guaranteed 100 percent. And Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly is on trial based on hearsay and its intent. I detect bias within this commentary. So when I did the commentary yesterday, I spoke about how individuals can do something at a young age and it doesn't come out until years later. However, in doing that thing, it may or may not be true. So she says, I detect bias within this commentary and sense that you're waiting and may be praying Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly is found guilty based on your whatever. So I don't know who she's talking to. I know she's not talking to R. Kelly of Pill TV because that's not what our agenda is here. And if she was actually involved, Yvette, if you were involved in the comments and the information, you would know what position I'm in. So um, that's based on what comes out of your mouth, said and unsaid. So I think she's just talking in general. I'm, I'm going to assume that she's talking in general. Common sense question. You may ask or even think, why subscribe? Simply stop. Answer. Understanding people agree to disagree, but that's not always right or wrong. I walk by faith unseen because of what I know, what I think and all I know is my faith walk. Absolutely, Yvette. And I'm glad that that's how you do think. And I'm grateful that because you do not allow other people's opinions to sway you or take you out of your comfort zone of expectation, it's going to be okay for you. And the same with me as well. The tongue is the most deadliest part of the body, she says. The eyes can be too blind. The ears can be so deaf. The heart can be empty and the hand can be too full. That nose too clogged, but God is love, grace, and new mercies for all who really love. Thank you, Yvette. And you are the one that I want to communicate with today. Because um, yesterday when I did that podcast about third week of trial and the August 29th entry, I basically said exactly that. No matter where a person's life takes them, no matter where a situation comes about, the belief in what will take place through justice is what it's all about. So I, I want to say two things because I had a I had a topic today to talk about, but when I read that I had to go 
in and I had to meditate. And Yvette, this is what I got. There is no doubt in my mind that I only want the best for Robert. Freedom, justice, equality. And, and my point is to say specifically that everyone is entitled to their opinions. I'm not going to bias base anyone off of what I believe to sway them, persuade them, or manipulate them to think as I do. So like a lot of people say, the beauty behind being human is we have that area where we can make the decision to more or less do or not do, feel or not feel, say or not say. So I don't know what the outcome is going to be for Robert, but I know my intention. So when you said to me about what my intentions may be for Robert Sylvester Kelly, that is your opinion about me. And that has nothing at all to do with me, Yvette. Um, that's how you process and perceive things. But everyone is entitled to their opinions regarding this case. This is a public opinions case. Okay. Um, what else do I want to say here? Nor am I saying that anyone else has a right to agree or disagree, a, a right to agree with me. They have a right to disagree. Okay. The power of life and death does lie in the words that we speak. I get that. That's why I stay positive. But, but there are times where we just need to just understand what is what it is. Okay. So the goal for this channel is to follow what is taking place in the trial. I give my opinion. Yes. But that means nothing to many people. You know, it means nothing. It's the facts that are being uh, credentialized here. And I use those facts based upon media outlets to get the information the way they see it. And so that's why I believe, Yvette, I have a right to an opinion based upon what I hear, because that commentary or that social media platform is giving an opinion as well. And so, yes, you're right. It should not play a part in the way that we see Robert Sylvester's, Robert Sylvester's case. So the goal here for this channel is to follow what takes place with opinions that make up what people believe or feel is their facts or their opinions. But when I hear it, that it's not facts, I'm going to state that. Testimony and transcripts are not facts. They're a testimony of what went on during a time when the only people that were there was there. So R. Kelly played a vicious number on Robert Sylvester Kelly. Because, again, there's a split. Robert Sylvester Kelly is not the same character that he is when he's on stage. Not saying that Robert should be, you know, uh, judged for what R. Kelly did when he was in that cycle of superstardom. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that he, he, he was present. He was present. So that means that in his presence, what takes place is what is occurring now? Lies, deceit, manipulation, um, power driving, narcissism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we all can agree that uh, R. Kelly played a number on Robert Sylvester Kelly, but R. Kelly was the character that created the storyline that Robert must now live with today. Being very, being the very person why Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly chooses not to speak on his behalf may be the very purpose of, because of the fear of what R. Kelly may say, may speak out of the mouth of Robert Sylvester Kelly. It's a dual dichotomy. My heart is 
about freeing R. Kelly from all bias in this case. The outcome will be as it will be. However, through it all, may Robert be able to see these trials and tests and go through them victoriously. And faith is all we do have, Yvette, upon his spirit. So you had a great response, and I thank you so much for putting it out there. But I wanted to just clarify my end because, yes, you have a right to your opinion about how you feel about my information. So no one has a right to judge anyone else's public opinions. We complain about having no good presidents in America and that they're doing what they want to do for their own public agenda. But yet when we are offered public opinion, this is where we feel so emotionally drawn that we're unable to understand that public opinion may run the America. Public opinion has always ran America. And it's just that it's coming home to roost in our own backyard because of the fact that R. Kelly is a person with the ability to have that freedom to express your public opinion. And we're just not used to it. We're not. So I'm going to look at something that I want to express to make sure that you kind of get where I'm coming from. Um, you know me, I do things based primarily on, you know, um, university study. So I do it as an academic platform. So when I encourage my students to express their personal opinions about writing or giving a public opinion, the first thing I want them to understand is the learning process. It's something that is healthy to do. Um, to do it effectively, one needs to acquire the skills necessary in order to learn how to express opinions in a reasonable, coherent manner that will teach others, that will leave a remnant of thought for another person to feel relative to whatever they're speaking about. So when we write or when we record podcasts or do things like that, one of the best things we need to do is know where we're going. Where is our vehicle going to drive the listener, the audience, the student to their opinion about what is being explored through the opinion itself? How valid? How valid is my information here at our Kelly Appeal TV? So before an opinion is based upon any information that is shared here at R. Kelly Appeal TV, here are some considerations that I want um, people to understand before they judge. Please don't split information, hear it all the way through. Maybe go back a second time and review it again. And in those two times, make sure we take notes so that we can be competent or understanding what is being stated in the content. Um, you, we have to understand what's being said specifically. And I'm not one that will sit back and say, I'm going to, you know, create this, this, and this as a content creator on YouTube. I'm just getting on there verbatim and I'm speaking, but I know that the, the, the words and the terminology that I use on a regular basis is consistent with what I know here at R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly, the Chicago trial, the federal Brooklyn trial. Okay. That is the mission statement here. Okay. So being able to understand why I'm even here to express this information will give us an understanding of the requirements of what is going to be spoken in the content. So that content is so vital to what the topics are. And I try to keep R. Kelly Appeals TV's topics specifically to what I'm going to speak about. Nine times out of 10, when I do a commentary or when I do a podcast, I'm doing it based upon what I'm going to speak about. So I do have a topic every time I hit the platform here. So the requirement is to 
ask oneself the question. And Yvette, you did that. You asked the question and the common sense question that came about um, was important to you, you know, um, but the judgment, the judgment came from hearing a portion of the video and not the whole thing. So that's why I understand totally. Of course, there are many types of questions and opinions that people can prompt uh, and coax other people into understanding from personal opinions from the individual reading or the individual getting the interpretation from what is being read, what is being stated. But nine times out of 10, it's about specifically t tailoring the response to what we're trying to get across. And there is no way that anyone can say on R. Kelly Appeal TV that I believe or hope to find Robert Sylvester Kelly guilty in any way. And that's why I didn't take your comment personal, Yvette, because I know my heart. I know what I put into the energy of Robert Sylvester Kelly. So it's clear that the personal opinion is going to permeate a wide range of things that will come about from reviews of other content that I've created, uh, commercials, advertisements that I connect to, people in which I link and connect to. Just because I do a commentary on someone who is a non-supporter does not mean that I'm a non-supporter. It means that I was requested to do something out of the ordinary of the channel, and I chose to do it because the content that I create here is about expanding my, my knowledge base and not just staying stuck in, in one particular area, but going out and responding to why I still choose to believe that Robert Sylvester Kelly deserves to be free based upon the way that the system is doing his case. That's totally different when it comes down to judging whether he's innocent or guilty. That's not for me to do. I wasn't there. And if these women who I believe are lying, but I, hey, it's public opinion, I can say whatever, but does it, is it valid? Is it valid? So that's why I'm waiting for the appeal. That's why I'm waiting consciously aware, waiting for the jury deliberation since Robert is not speaking on his own behalf. So we have different reviews. We have commentaries that uh, we create. We have newspaper articles. But despite all this diversity of, of public opinion, when we hear something, we can take from it whatever is going to validate what we already believe in it. So everyone is believing something about Robert Sylvester Kelly. Um, the general criteria is that it's going to help the, the individual navigate through challenges and find out solutions why they believe in what they believe. So that's what I want people to understand when they come to R. Kelly Appeal TV. It's about taking the information and plugging it into what you believe, not what others believe, because this is the reason for the uh, the... The sheep, the sheep is going to follow the leader. Why? Because it's feeding the sheep. It's making the sheep available. It's introducing the sheep to the leader's click. And so in doing that, they get more, more, what is it? More advantage, you know? So yeah, I want... That to be understand, stand understood as well. So when we talk about opinions, we're looking at all type of things. Downloading, we're looking at criterias that address the situation. We're looking at the transcripts. We're looking at persuasive, persuasive talking. We're looking at discussions. We're looking at arguments. And we're looking at expositions. We're looking at explosive 
attitudes that are all over the place. And then we're trying to create our thought. And that's one of the reasons why the majority of the time that R. Kelly Appeal TV has been existing, I chose not to go out into the platform to get other people's varying opinions because of that very reason. So, so we use, we need strategies that encourage people on how to think on an opinion based basis. And that's what this video is about. Um, so when we look at things that address the audience, when, when I do a video here at R. Kelly Appeal TV, I try to identify with the audience the important facts of what the channel represents. So that channel represents the freedom and justice of Robert Sylvester Kelly in the way that the trial-based system and criminal justice is treating him. So that's the purpose and the background and the backdrop to our Kelly Appeal TV. So the language is very clear and it's very communicating to the students and it should be understood that even though we all think on a different level, the purpose of the meeting here at our Kelly Appeal TV is to understand what is going on in the federal trials and what is understood from public opinion and ideas and um, articles. This means that it is considerably about the character of the audience. Who is coming to the channel? Who is taking this information in and how they're processing it? So that's why we cannot be angry at somebody else's opinion because the way that people process is based on the way they've been taught. What if you had a kid who was taught to sit and read your book and in peace and tranquility and quietness versus a person who only picked up a book when they were chaotic? It's going to be two different opinion bases. And this is what we talked about yesterday. Um, ensuring that these thoughts expressed are expressed in an understandable way that equ equates with what we're saying here at our Kelly Appeal TV. So the listener here should always avoid making the assumption that I know something explicitly by fact that this is what it is, not emotion, not emotion. So we're going to take the stand and we're going to be firm in what we believe based on what is stated. And Yvette, this is why I, I feel grateful that you were able to come on here and speak your opinion, speak your truth. And this was what it is. And that's great because that's what we want here at R. Kelly Appeal TV. We want people to come on and speak exactly what they feel, not in a negative way to the point where everybody's losing the whole content fact of why um, R. Kelly Appeal TV exists. Because again, it's about public opinion, but the basis here is we believe in the justice and the freedom of Robert Sylvester Kelly because of how the criminal justice system is doing him in today's world, right now in 2022. We're not talking 2008. We're not talking about him when he was the superstar. We're talking about Robert Sylvester Kelly being stripped of everything and all things that makes him who he is. OK, and th these are one of the reasons why I choose not to read the transcript, because prosecution is going to tell you exactly what they want you to know and to buy into. And so is defense. But at what point is it true? Anybody can get on the stand and lie. And I saw that in my own case. They can get on the stand and they can tell the story, but it's not a lie. It's their fact of truth. And everyone has one. What are your thoughts? So opinion-based conversation is not about communicating the pros and the cons or discussing the length and the advantages and disadvantages. The place is, is, is not there for a public opinion there. The public opinion piece should be open with a bold statement at the beginning and then an opinion that is clearly stated at the right after. And that opinion should be held 
unwavering and reinforced consistently throughout the content. And that's what I try to do here. Okay. And then choosing appropriate evidence. When I use, like yesterday, when I use that whole concept of this guy 28 years later that got stopped by the police for something that he had did in 1994, it finally caught up to him in um, 2022. I'm saying, look at what the propaganda of social media is presenting to us during the trial of Robert Sylvester Kelly, because what is taking place is getting us to believe that, oh, what you do comes back. And yes, judgment will always favor um, being favor the truth. The truth will come out eventually on all and everything. I'm not saying that Robert's truth is coming out the way this young man's truth came out yesterday. What I am saying is that what is done in the dark will come to the light. Now, how it is perceived and what really goes on in that underlying perspective is between the initiates of that situation, not the onlooker or the observer. Do you see what I mean? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be as open and as explicit, ex, ex, expressive as I can be in order to talk about what is appropriate when we are speaking about public opinion. And this is where everybody is getting it all misunderstood because there are bias between everybody's opinions. So, and then drawing the conclusion and wrapping it up, putting it into perspective of what, from based on what you came in knowing, what you learned from the experience of the conversation, and then meditating on it and making a conclusion that is going to bring you to your fact. That is, it's well organized, it's opinion based, it is has types of extended situations that go on, and it's structured. And it has great organizational understanding. That's when we can generally say that we have made a precise public opinion. And that's what I want R. Kelly Appeal TV to recognize when they're making their decisions and talking in debates, because that is the most vital thing that keeps you in control and keeps everyone else emotional. Because the point is you're sticking and staying with what you are saying. This is why I did, um, was requested to do the Atmos Love video and then um, do that commentary on it. And so now we're extending it into why it was done that way. So I thank you for um, listening to this, getting an understanding, a true understanding of Robert Sylvester Kelly's situation within the a public opinion based process. And, and how was it affecting your thoughts? How was it making you see things when you run into things that you don't believe? That is not facts for you. That's what I want to get you to see today. And the ultimate goal is to make sure that everyone is healed within what is being stated and coming here to get a piece of understanding and taking back with them a piece of hope that's going to make them see that their level up of thought is the most primary piece of information that anyone will ever have to go through in their lives. And that's making that ultimate decision. I also want to share with you that... Uh, you know, I, I have a feeling that R. Kelly is funneling through the historical perspective of Robert Sylvester Kelly. Remember, I told you that he was in the background of R. Kelly. Robert Sylvester Kelly has always stood in the background watching the life of R. Kelly become who and what it is. OK, Robert is the quiet individual. Um. If you remember, Andrea Kelly even said it, 
when she said, Robert is this nice, kind, gentle guy. He's kind. But then when that other one creeps in, he becomes this narcissistic monster. Okay. So even taking that comment and then tying it with the Gail King interview when he says, this is not me, y'all. I didn't do all this stuff. He's, he's, he's saying, he's saying that these women are lying, yes, but that when he was involved and when he was doing, uh, you know, living that life of that superstar and everything was just given to him like on a silver platter, he took it, he ate it, and he digested it. And then he exposed of it. You know what I mean? It's that's how we live. That's what we do in society. And and so R. Kelly shows up and he becomes this, you know, swag, beautiful, handsome, debonair character that is not singing today. R. Kelly is not singing in that courtroom. R. Kelly is not doing the jester work or the magician work as he has always been doing from what we've seen, what we've heard. And I'm not even going back all the way to when he, 20 years of, of you know, being told that he did this and he did that. That has nothing to do with me. My point is how the justice system is doing him today. Is this correct? Are they taking into consideration the trauma-based programming that he has been trained to learn and know? Okay, psychological evaluations are important. And see, the R. Kelly character did this. Now, the R. Kelly character is no more. Why? Because we don't see him on the screen, doing new videos. Do, we want to see that. Yes, every one of his Kelly Nation supporters definitely should want to see R. Kelly back on the screen doing what he did to entertain us. But the human part of Robert is now being taken over by this character that is no longer truly Hmm, active. Someone said that they've laid him to rest. R. Kelly is laid to rest in that courtroom. R. Kelly, the character of R. Kelly, is not active. And Robert can't even speak. He's muted. Because Robert did not. Robert Sylvester Kelly, the human man, was prone to error, did not violate or validate what the character of R. Kelly did. Because when he was in that moment, when he was in that, in that moment, he did as R. Kelly wanted to do. And R. Kelly is the one being convicted and sentenced with Robert's name on the character. So I know it sounds weird. I know it sounds crazy, but the young woman from Chicago that I had the conversation with is saying that it's the same thing with Michael Jackson. It's the same thing with Whitney Houston. It's the same thing with Prince. It's the same thing with uh, um, even Bobby Christina. And she wasn't a singer, but she was born into the footsteps of the singer, Whitney Houston. But Whitney Houston was the closest to the human of Whitney as she could be because her name was not different than her, her surname. So she was living her life out through that character as Whitney Houston, as Michael Jackson. But when you take Robert Sylvester Kelly and you break it to R, because remember he did the split when he was well into the youth area, he said, I didn't want Robert Sylvester Kelly because that was something that wasn't going to sell. But R. Kelly would sell. So it was a pseudonym. It was a pseudonym. It was something that he hid behind. It was the cloak that Batman wore. It was the green, the kryptonite. 
It was the, the Incredible Hulk when he turned green. And these are things I want you to really, really consider. Um, again, there's nothing to really report on in the courtroom. We all know what's going to be said. It was already done in 2008. Okay, these people, we got new people coming on. We got four, four more new young ladies who is claiming to be, you know, victims of R. Kelly. Um, and you notice that um, when they use the term R. Kelly and when they use the term Robert Sylvester Kelly, it's two different things. And that's what I want you to know. This is what public opinion does. And let me see. I was going to do a live today, but then I felt, well, in order to get out what I needed to get out, I needed to stay focused. And I wasn't going to be able to stay focused with uh, people you know, asking questions or, you know, having their say right in the midst of the conversation. So this premiere is, um, I'm, I'm going to add like 10 minutes to it. And I want you to just know that as of August the 14th, the motion by Robert Sylvester Kelly to excuse for cause all potential jurors, that is the main document that is um, actually on file that I'm willing to look at. Uh, August 16th, 2022, they did an order um, of a voir dire and it began. August 23rd, there was a sealed motion that was put into effect. And um, I believe that sealed motion was about what's coming up right now with the um, individuals who are going to be speaking. And then there was a miscellaneous relief in the main document on August 23rd as well. There was a rebuttal back. And then August 29th, the main document in Lemony, in Lemine, I'm sorry. So that's what's going on. And if you want to, you can go um, and research in, on YouTube any of the individuals who are reading the transcripts. And if there's something that sticks out to you, Send it over to me and we'll go through it and I will, you know, share some information from the criminal justice standpoint side. So, yeah, but thank you so much for being here, liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing to this podcast. This is a time, guys. This is a time. We have to remain aware and we have to know what we're thinking intuitively. Um. I'm sorry, I did not get to go back and read the other comments of other people because that comment was what I wanted to really stay focused on. But um, let me see here. We had, um, let me see here. Hey, Appeal TV, listen, I have my feelings. All I can say is God has Mr. Kelly and I have looked at his childhood, but I think he has not been treated right. God bless. Frankie, you're right. And that's why I created this um, podcast here to let people know that, yes, the injustice of Robert is where I choose to fight. Claudette says she missed another another live. She was catching up on yesterday's video, but it's OK. Um, they're recording. You could go back and check them at any time. I know you want to get that energy um, when it's first coming out, but nine times out of 10, the majority of um, my conversations are, is something that we can definitely go back and talk about independently. Mila says she came back to see us. Thank you, Wise Intelligent, for being here yesterday on the platform. I really want to know what your point of view was um, about what you heard on the on the on the platform, um, because I heard you listening, and then something happened, and of course, you know how we do. Um, we get into these uh, premieres and lives, and the next thing you know, things don't work like they should. 
Um, but Southern Bell gave a really good point yesterday about the 28 years later with this uh, traffic stop. She said, um, very unfortunate. Most people don't think or contemplate on things happening to them, even though we see it happening every day. And that's something that I do feel that is very unfortunate, because if we can prevent ourselves from having to go through those technical difficulties when we are stopped, when we are um, have any type of police involvement at that or a criminal justice system involvement. The way to win in America is to always stay steps ahead of the game. If we can stay steps ahead of the game, then we can definitely win. And this is going on in other parts of the world while Robert is not speaking for himself. He can't say anything. I mean, and yet we see this. And so you know that it is a publicity area that gets people to want to talk more about public opinion. And that's what I believe all this is about. It's about that public opinion of what do you believe? Because prosecution wasn't there. Government wasn't there. The criminal justice system can't truly give guilt or innocence to anyone when it does not know anything about the people. And that's where public opinion matters. And so, yeah, everyone has a right. And 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 you know what's so crazy about it? And I'm going to say this and then I'm going to let you guys go. What else is important and crazy is that people have a right to feel one way today and another way tomorrow. And that is the part where most people are going to get pissed off at me because people have that right. That's just like me being born into Christianity and then turning away from Christianity, from all that I had experienced and finding other philosophical outlets that said, this is not just the only religion, but the basis of religion, of the basis of religion is spirituality. It's not religion, it's spirituality. So when you can awaken and consciously buy into the change and then dare to change, yes, there's going to be some chaos. There's going to be some struggle because this is something you have been habitually used to. But when you realize that you have a right to not be born in it, but to feel it, to understand it, to recognize it, and then to apply it, oh, the world is yours from that point. As always, keep it 100. I'm going to put 10 minutes in the chat. So if you have anything else you want to say in quiet time, the chat will remain open for you to write whatever you want to write into it. And then we'll respond on it tomorrow. All right. Peace and blessings. Thank every one of my subscribers. Everyone who sits in the background and listens, thank my students. You know, this is what you're always taught when we do our Zooms and our, our conference meetings. So, yes. I still haven't had an opportunity to get with my student, but I will. All right. And with that, peace and blessings, and we'll see you next time.